Hello again, uh, this is the resumption of the earlier video to do with the NZCCA game of correspondence chess. We completed the first 33 moves in the game and so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish this game off with the final 10 moves. So in other words, we have a, a problem as good as set here, white to play and win in 10 moves and in fact a checkmate on the 11th move. So what has happened here is that we've arrived at the position after black's 32nd move which is pawn takes knight or gf. So white has to play. I would strongly recommend anyone who happens to have come to this video first before the other one Go and have a look at the other video first, because that gives you the the moves that lead up to this position, and, and very instructive, I believe, that they are too. So have a look at that first, and then come to this, and see if you can uh, figure out what is going on here. I think the next move is pretty obvious, because the Queen was having uh, positioned itself on the G-line, and Black's King also on the G-line. We want to attack the King, so let's put Black out of his misery and play the obvious move, which of course is g takes f and it's a discovered check on the king so what happens then just give you a moment to think about that well clearly if the king moves to here then it's mate on g5 if the king moves to here, then of course the rook would come behind the queen and it's going to inevitably be mate either on g7 or g8 if the rook goes to g8. So that's that's really not an option and the king can't move to f6 or g6 because of the pawns. All that white really has to do is to line up on the g-line if black does go to h8. So the only option really is for black to play king f8, which is what he did in the game. So that's the position. Let's get this right. After 33, king f8. So what white wants to do here is to stop that black f pawn advancing and also the king escaping to e7 so the obvious move here is to play f6 which is what happened white is threatening queen g7 and occupying the d-line and trying to force checkmate on g8 so how does black extricate himself from this one Give you a few more moments. Well, what he in fact plays is he takes the pawn on b2. So he's disregarding the, the threat on the king side altogether. And so white replies with queen g7 check. That's 35, queen 2, g7, check. So black only has one move, which is forced king e8. So it's, it's white's 36th move. Like I said earlier, the idea really is to occupy the d-line and then play queen g8. So the obvious move is to ignore this rook here and to play rook d1, which is what happened. So that's stopping Black's King from escaping onto the D-line. He can't go to E7. White is threatening mate on the move. Queen to G8. So he has to find some means of interposing there. What can he do? He can't really give check with anything other than by playing his Queen to G2 or H1 and he'd just give it up for nothing. But that's not an option. So what does he do?
Well, he plays queen b4, of course, with the idea of interposing down here on f8. So, I've mentioned this in other videos where you can interpose a piece to stop the connection. And this is no exception. We want to make sure that black cannot get his queen to f8. This is undoubtedly a winning position for white because he's two pawns up. However, we want to finish him off rather quicker than that. So the move in question is rook to d6 and that cuts off the diagonal and now white is once again threatening mate on g8. There is really no way of defending against g8 there so he has to do something else. What does he do? Well of course he could take the rook giving up his queen. Incidentally, there is a, a queen sacrifice by black in this that doesn't work, and there is a queen sacrifice by white that does work. And black does have to sacrifice his queen here. Well, what he plays is queen takes f4 check. So he's putting white in check, so white can't deliver mate on the move on g8. He has to stop that check. So the obvious move, of course, is to accept the, the sacrifice and take the queen. So white is threatening once again, queen g8 mate. So, of course, as most players would tend to look at this, we'll get two rooks on the seventh, which looks pretty threatening. I'd, I'd seen all of this, and my opponent clearly had seen all of it as well. And I think he felt that he, he had a win here. That's why he played queen takes f4. It would have been a brilliant queen sacrifice if it had worked out, but uh, as will be seen, it, it doesn't work out. White plays king h3. And so how does black respond to that? Well, he plays rook c3 check. Now he's controlling the, the second and third ranks. So rook f3 wouldn't do because he'd take the, the rook. So there's only one move and it's king g4. Let's have a look at that for a moment. So he thinks he's winning the queen. Rook to g2 check. So how does white respond to this? He can't go to the third rank. He can't go to g5. He could go to f5. But what he in fact plays is king h5. So black can take the queen, can't he? However, if he were to take the queen, then white would respond by taking the rook. And then there is nothing that black can do to stop white from queening that pawn. Just to confirm it, just take here for a moment and go here. How can he stop the queening of that pawn? If he plays here, 
then the rook interposes and then the queen becomes irresistible on g8. If he plays bishop to e2 check, then he can still get around it. And I won't give you the answer to that because it's coming up in a moment in the actual game, so that would spoil it. So we'll just come back to that in a moment. So what he in fact plays is this immediately. Now how does white respond to that? Well, he plays this lovely move here, which is what would have been played in the earlier piece of analysis. Now, if he plays bishop takes with check, the king just goes here. And then it's either mate next move, or he plays here. And then it's queen h8 check, rook g8, queen takes g8 mate. So that just doesn't work. So what he decides to play, and this is probably what he'd seen, but he overlooked the final move, he decides to take the rook with his own rook. And what he's figured on here is that white cannot play queen g8 because the rook just takes the queen. And if the queen comes here, then the rook goes here interposing, simultaneously exposing the white king to check. So that wouldn't work. So there's only one move, and this is white to win in two moves. Can you see it? Well, it's queen f8 check. And black resigns. Because if he takes the queen on f8, it's rook d8, mate. Let's just demonstrate. That's a forced move anyway, so he would have to, to go down that route. Like so. And then it would be rook d8. Checkmate. A nice finish, isn't it? So that was a very pleasing result. I do hope you enjoy the game and the uh, the problem white to play and win in 10 moves and to checkmate on the 11th move. And all the very best in your chess endeavours in the future and bye bye for now.